Joining us to discuss the jobs data now, former U.S. Acting Labor Secretary under President Obama, Seth Harris from Bethesda, Maryland today. Seth, so what troubled you most about this unemployment report? Well, I think the unemployment report is a good report, but it's really a picture of where we were three weeks ago in the United States when the survey data was collected, not where we are right now. These data predate the huge surge in infections and hospitalizations. It predates the reclosing of California, Arizona, Texas, Florida, and other jurisdictions. Um, it predates a number of states in the Northeast of the United States saying that if you visit there from one of those high infection jurisdictions, that you're going to be quarantined. So the economy, I think, has slowed significantly. That was partly reflected in the continuing very high layoff numbers, essentially the initial unemployment claim numbers um, that were 1.42 million. That is five times times the number that they were at um, in February. So I think that the report is a very, very good report. And it's nice to see that we've recovered a third of the jobs that we lost in April and May. But I don't think it's a predictor for the future. I think the, the future is going to be a lot more grim. Yeah, I mean, Seth, when you consider that between the central bank and, you know, the fiscal authorities, probably the amount of the hit to GDP was shoved back at the economy, right, to try and reverse some of the medical effects of the coronavirus, at least in the economy. But that's not going to be enough, right, because we're winding down several of those, you know, efforts. So, for example, the PPP is winding down. We're also seeing the $600 in extra unemployment benefits go away at the end of the month. Yeah, Vani, I think you've got it exactly right. A sizable part of the reason why the economy did not get worse and that unemployment began to came, come down in April and May is massive spending on the fiscal side by Congress and a huge infusion of money into the economy by the Federal Reserve Bank. And now we're beginning to see the risk that these expenditures are going to expire and that especially congressional Republicans and President Trump are not going to be willing to renew that spending at a sufficiently high level. I think they will throw a small amount of additional money at the problem, but not enough. And that was the mistake we made coming out of the Great Recession. We did a $900 billion stimulus package that was tremendously helpful. It saved capitalism in the United States. But then we didn't spend enough more to get the economy really growing at a rapid clip. Here, the risk is even more grave. If we don't do additional substantial spending, we could the economy could double dip into a deeper recession. So, Seth, we did see today, you know, that several groups were much more hit in the June data. Is there anything that can be done to target specific groups in the immediate term? Larry Kudlow earlier was talking about things like, you know, re-incentive benefits or re-employment type benefits. What do you think the fourth phase looks like? Well, there's a difference between what it's going to look like and what it should look like. Uh, this re-incentive idea, the idea that you would pay people to go back to work is just a silly idea. The reason that people are not working has nothing whatsoever to do with their economic incentives. It has to do with two things. One is they don't have a job. And the second thing is that they're deeply fearful of going out into the economy because they don't want to get sick and die. Um, it's that simple. Fear is the leading economic indicator in the United States right now. But there's a lot we can do to help African-Americans and Latinx workers in the American economy. We have systemic racism in the American economy, and we see it in the unemployment numbers that came out today, where unemployment among African-Americans is half, one half higher than it is among white workers. That's tragic, but it is also the story of the American economy and has been for a long time. So what we need to do is to invest in the jobs that help African-American and Latinx workers to climb into the middle class, manufacturing, construction, the public sector. We need to ferociously fight discrimination in the labor market and in the workplace. We need to ensure guaranteed economic equity. And we also need to address the housing challenge that keeps good jobs away from African American workers. So, Seth, you know, we did hear from Joe Biden earlier on. We haven't heard from him in a long time. And yet he is the, you know, the, the, the person who should be really taking on the president at this time, given that we're just a few months away from the election. You served in the Obama-Biden White House. What's President Biden's plan to reverse this job loss? 
Well, I think that what he's going to do is to propose a massive jobs strategy. Um, he certainly already proposed a significant climate change and infrastructure strategy uh, to help create jobs, but also to help the economy to move to a green uh, future. Um, that will create a tremendous number of jobs. His strategy is to put more money in workers' pockets, more skills training, but also raising the minimum wage, expanding overtime protections, increasing the number of union members and union in the United States, if we put money in the pockets of middle class workers, put money in the pockets of low wage workers, that is a way to drive growth in the American economy, along with an aggressive job strategy. That's where I think Vice President Biden is and will be coming forward. And that contrasts with uh, President Trump, who frankly talks a tremendous amount about jobs, but really does very little to try to create them. We've had more infrastructure weeks under President Trump than we have had infrastructure jobs created. All right, well, we will await a concrete uh, rollout of any kind of plan from presidential contender Biden. And thanks to you, Seth Harris, former acting U.S. Labor Secretary.